How many times have you heard the phrase or even asked yourself the phrase or said the phrase, look how far I've come? It's a great analysis to look back and see where you were when you started a journey, started something to see where you are today. I think a lot of times that Pastor Donovan and I will be married 13 years this year. And I look at that, that we've been, we've been married more than a decade. We've been doing life together and full-time ministry in the same office for more than 10 years. And I look at where we were when we first got married and the meals that we ate and the amount of ramen we invested into to where we are now. And I'm amazed at what God has done, what he's shown us, what we've seen, the two little boys that have been added to our family, the amazing miracles that we've gotten to witness. But then I stop for a moment and I think, if I'm always looking back at what's happened, can I miss out on being prepared for what's coming? There's a point in the race where you're running and you're running and you look back and you're like, oh, I'm going really, I'm, I'm doing good. You check over your shoulder. You look back to see where maybe the other runners are, how far you came from the starting line. But then there's a turn in the road and, and I can't keep looking back if I'm going to keep moving forward. There's a point where I have to not only move forward, but I have to move forward and turn. I have to see what's coming and see where I'm going. Elijah was an incredible prophet that we get to read about and, and experience and see the power of God in his life in 1 Kings. And there comes a point in 1 Kings where Elijah, his time is coming to an end and he knows it. And he knows that he's not going to die, that he's going to be taken up to heaven. He knows this fact. And Elisha is a prophet who's gone with Elijah. He spent time with him. He's been in the trenches with him. He has seen the anointing and the presence of God over Elijah time and time and time again. And Elisha says to Elijah, I want a double portion. I want a double portion of what you have. And Elijah responds to him, it will be given to you if you see me taken. So I can only imagine the vigilance that came over Elisha, that he's not going to sleep. He's not going to, he's not going to rest. He's not going to give anything up. His eyes are on Elijah because he doesn't want to miss that double portion. And then he receives it. And Elijah, Elisha, sorry, Elisha surely grieves the, 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 the transition for Elijah, but he doesn't stay in that grief. And I'm not saying if you're grieving today that you shouldn't stay there or you shouldn't grieve. Grieving is, is an emotion that we have to work through. But Elisha didn't sit there and stay there. He moved forward and continued to operate in the anointing and the double portion that he was blessed with. To the point where it says in 2 Kings, it's right around 2 Kings chapter 10 or 11, that Elisha has now died. He's in the tomb. He's dead and there were pirates coming through Israel and the Israelites had had a man that had been buried had died and they were getting ready to bury him and they see the pirates coming and out of fear of the tomb raiders they just throw this dead body in the cave and the dead body touches the bones of Elisha and the bible says his life is restored the portion that was poured over Elisha remained even in his body after he, he is, his soul was in heaven. The reason that this is important is because Elisha didn't keep looking back and go, look what Elijah did. Look what Elijah did. Look what Elijah did. I want to be more like him. He took that double portion and ran forward and said, look what God's going to do. Look what God's going to do in my life. Look what God's going to do through me. Look what God's going to do in Israel. Look what God's going to do. And I'm going to run. And he left a legacy that transformed someone's life even after he was dead. The question today is this. Take a moment and look back and say, look how far I've come. But then I challenge you to stop and pivot and say, look what God's going to do next. My question for you today is not what's the worst that can happen. Take a leap of faith. It's what's the best that's going to happen when you take a steadfast walk of faith. There's two different things. I challenge you to what is the best that God's going to do when you take a steadfast walk of faith.